You see these? These are my rails from the past three years. Each one is bent. <laughs> so that's kind of what this video is gonna be about today. We're gonna to talk about things that you should put on your Gen 5 Turbo before the season starts, because uh, I seem to break things. First thing that goes on my sled before every season starts is an aftermarket rear bumper. I'm running the BSB Fab Assassin bumper. The reason why I think a bumper should be number one priority with a Gen 5 Turbo is for how much they like to wheelie. These sleds are wheelie monsters, especially early in the season when there's low snow. It is absolutely crucial to protect your tunnel with an aftermarket rear bumper. That's really what those bumpers do is they're kind of tunnel protection. Number two, while you're at it, you might as well throw on a front bumper too. Again, I run the BSB Fab Assassin HD bumper. It's just extra reassurance for when you do smoke that big tree. Hopefully it'll just bend the bumper rather than total your sled. That's why you should run a front bumper. Now, those two things aren't really groundbreaking. Um, those aren't really secrets. Uh, that's just what I would prioritize if I were you. I think everyone agrees a, a front and rear bumper aftermarket is probably better, but I would prioritize a rear bumper and then a front bumper on the Gen 5 Turbo, especially if you're balling on a budget like me. Okay, and then as you saw in the intro of the video, it seems like I go through rails every single year. <laughs> I finally, this last season, I finally, once I bent my rails, I finally manned up and bought myself a pair of Ice Age Performance Bomber rails. They have been great so far. They put up to the abuse that I put them through during some of those spring rides. And uh, I just, every single year now, I'm gonna be throwing in some Ice Age Bomber rails. While you're swapping out rails and taking the skid apart, you might as well uh, throw in a Ride Rasmussen heat exchanger plate. So it seemed like every single season I was riding early, I would use the pin and wiggle technique, maybe a little too much, to get myself out of some stucks. And uh, pin and wiggle is great to an extent. You don't want to overdo it. You don't want to ruin your belt. You don't want to ruin your sled. If you can pin and wiggle real quick and get out of something, that's the way to go. But there's been a few times where I was, where I was pinning and I was wiggling and all of a sudden I hear a clink. And what do you know it? I hit a rock right through the heat exchanger, right through the cooler. And uh, there was coolant pouring everywhere. And I'll tell you what, that'll ruin your day real fast. And uh, so as someone who doesn't weld, that's an expensive mistake and uh, just a pain to fix, especially if it's if the season's going. So I put in that Ride Rasmussen heat exchanger plate and that just helps protect my sled in that early season. And also we have super dry, sugary snow, so it's always bottomless. It seems like we're always hitting the bottom. This last thing, but certainly not least, this one isn't really protection like some of those other things. This one's more of a comfort thing and that is the short bars. I'm about 5'10". It's a hot topic in the sled industry right now. Um, a lot of the professionals like the shorter bars. The shorter bars are better for aggressive riding. Um, are they less comfortable on the trails than just casual riding? For sure. But when you're in steeper terrain, more technical terrain, the shorter bars actually give you more leverage. And why the shorter bars give you more leverage is because when you're on a 40 degree slope, you don't want handlebars at your chest. That's just an awkward position to be in. Maybe on a flat meadow, they give you more leverage because you can stand up taller. But when you're standing on either side of your sled and you're in a real aggressive position, you want those bars kind of in a nice, relaxed, athletic position. And so when you're on the steeper terrain, that's when you really notice those shorter bars and how big of an advantage they give you. I used to be the guy that always ran stock bar height. And last year I finally put on short bars. I will never go back to taller bars. So you won't really notice how bad the tall bars are until you hop back on a sled that has the normal stock height bars. So shorter bars all the way for the win. I think most industry professionals would agree with that statement. And that about does it for this super short video. Those are the top five things that I put on my sled before the season starts. Those are the top five things I put on my sled before I even think about clutching, before I even think about cans, before I even think about putting mods on. Heydays is coming right up. We're gonna be sharing a booth with Deviant Inc. We're super excited. This is our first heydays. We're gonna have these t-shirts here. There's a story behind these t-shirts. We're gonna announce it soon. Uh, more turbo, less tunnel. Hopefully you can pick some of these up at heydays. That's when they're gonna be available to purchase. So thanks for watching guys. Go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.